Hello, hello. Is anyone out there? Yay. Up, oh, I see people popping in. Happy hump day, everybody, and may the fourth be with you. How's everybody doing, okay? Wait for a couple more people to pop in before I start. Oh, we're getting up there. Sweet, sweet. So, hello again, everyone. This is Leslie Pope, the senior designer at The Beat Smith, and I'm really excited to bring you another one of my creations. This one is called the Polonia Connections Bracelet. And I just realized this is a little symbol heavy, but um, I really do like... Um, I really do like the symbols and I like putting metal in my findings. So without further ado, let me show you the project in real time. So as you see, ooh, I don't have enough light here. What's going on with the light? Ah, that's better. Um, it's yet another one of my component pieces, which I love to make. Because you can do whatever you want. You can make more. You can make less. You can make earrings. Um, you can make a longer bracelet. You can make a pendant. But this is the bracelet. And it's just connected with jump rings. And of course, the Team Leslie favorite. The partially finished bracelet end. Which makes... Your jewelry so adjustable, so adjustable. And Paisley Duos, I love Paisley Duos. These are the four colorways that I did, which will show up on the last page of the tutorial with the actual names of everything, names and colors of everything. And we always have the tutorial for you. This one's really short. It's a page and a half of instructions and the diagrams, which, like, you could probably look at the diagrams and figure out how to do the piece. That's how simple it is. So, let's get to our beads here. So, like I said, we have three symbols in this. We have the Veridi. Uh, super duo um, substitute with this nice little texture in the middle there. We have the Polonia side bead, which is what the, um, the bracelet is named after. And then as the connector, we have the Comia. So you get to uh, sew it in and you have your, you have your nice little loop there that you put your your jump rings through and voila and paisley's size 11s size 15s and uh, jump rings partially finish bracelet ends and ear wires if you decide to make earrings and it's uh three passes and you're done. So I have cut my 20 inches of uh, fire line and threaded it onto um, a size 11 needle. And step one is to pick up a Veridi substitute. And my only thing is like when you string it, make sure that your texture side is up on all of your pieces. And then an 11, and we're going to do that four times. Number two. Number three. Number 
before. I do not know why I have such a bad shadow going on here. I want everybody to see what I'm doing, but I'm getting a really bad shadow. Hmm, okay. So you get these on, they're all facing up. Mute yourself, Leslie. You're not muted. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties, people. So my instructions say to leave a three-inch tail, but I'm not going to do that because this, in the essence of time, and we're going to sew back through all the beads. And I didn't do my little spiel about checking to make sure all of your multi-hole beads and findings are clear before you start stitching, which I always do before I start a demo because I never want to get around to one side and have a hole that I can't get through. All right, so we're going to tie a couple of surgeon knots here so your thread won't slip there we go so that is round one and we're going to sew through the variety away from your knot there we go and then through the open hole to step up and reverse your thread direction so you can start your second row. And so Paisley Duos have a concave and a convex side. So you have to pay attention to which way you put them in. So you start with the tip hole through the, through the concave side, pick up a 15, then your next paisley, you're going to flip it so they mirror each other. So then you're going to go through the convex side. And I think they look like little elephant ears. When you put them down together like this, I could be wrong, but I think they look like little elephant ears. And then you're going to sew through the next 3D. There we go. Little, little elephant ears. And we're just going to repeat that three more times. Your paisley, your paisley at your 15, your paisley in the opposite direction, and through the next variety. And I'm getting ready to chop my little thread off here because it's tail thread off here. Normally I would say weave it in before you cut it off, but it's annoying me, so I'm just going to snip it off. There we go. All right. So, number three, paisley concave side, 15 paisley convex side and through the next variety and one more time paisley 15 and paisley and if i was teaching this or you'll see in my instructions I tell you, see how floppy that is? I tell you to sew through all the beads again to A, reinforce your thread path, and B, to keep it from being so flimsy, but I don't know if I'm going to take the time to do this all the way around. Or maybe I will, so you can see what I mean about whether it's flimsy or not. And since the holes don't exactly line up on all the pieces, it's really hard to get through 
all of them at once. So you have to be a little patient. So through all the beads, make sure you don't skip any beads as you're going around. There we go. And then after I get to the other side, you will see how much firmer the component is. If I can stop, there we go. I'm a little discombobulated today. I didn't think I was going to make it to uh, to do this because I lost power at like 9.15 this morning. <laughs> so there you are, your second round. And you see how much firmer the center is that I did that. And so our last row, round, is to go through the top whole of your paisley duo and it has to be on the convex side it'll disappear you'll never see it all right and then you're going to pick up a 15 and sew through the next page okay sorry a little low on the screen all right and then we're going to add our first polonia So through the next, and then we're going to pick up another 15 and so through the following paisley. And then we're going to add our comia ending. I'm a little trouble seeing today. Hmm. Could be my allergies. And then we're just going to repeat on the other side. So you're going to end up with two polonia and two comia, and they're going to be opposite each other. My polonia here. There we go. And my 15. And my last comia. And you definitely, definitely want to sew all the way through all the, the beads on your last pass because this is really, really flimsy. You can see how flimsy that is versus the one that I did earlier where I sewed all the way through on the second ending and it's not flimsy so I'm gonna do this really quick I hope and not bore anyone half to death there we go and I definitely can only get through one to two beads um, when I do this as you might be able to tell and that's good so I also am not skipping anything. If you get around and it looks like things are not laying flat, it's a distinct possibility that you skip the bead somewhere. And I'm almost to the beginning of my component and it's nice and firm yay so then you would just tie it off with a few half hitch knots just so nothing slips or I have this one I've also gone through again like a whole one whole time again before I knotted it it doesn't really matter it's about security and firmness okay so I'm gonna snip that off and here's two of my components so after you make your third or fourth component then you can put it together so take your jump ring. I've already opened up my jump ring. 
put the two sides together so when you close your jump ring your uh, your textured sides will be matching each other because I've done that wrong a couple of times believe it or not come on there we go there we go and close up your jump ring remember front to back not side to side so you don't torque the shape out and you're connected Ta -da! then you would take another jump ring and go to one of your end components and add it onto your partially finished bracelet end close up your jump ring and if I had my third component I would join this on the other side of my bracelet and ta-da you would be done and this is what you get and the key to measurement is your bead work needs to fit from wrist bone to wrist bone so you can slide it over your hand and snug it up so if three components are not big enough to slide over your wrist just make another component and cinch it up and there you go I have a fairly large hand but a relatively small wrist so I like having the adjustable bracelet bands because then you don't have to worry about if you made something too long or too small or yada 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 and the earrings are exactly the same except you're going to add three polonia and only one comia and then you put your ear wire on and poof you're done so that is my polonia connections bracelet uh, another fun component project because i love component projects and the, the pattern is not up in I Love Beads yet, but give it like a day and it should pop up and it will probably be under Symbols and Paisley Duos. So, as usual, we hope you enjoyed our Facebook Live. You can find all these beads, symbol components, fire line, my trusty little tools. These are the micro fine pliers. I love them because they just fit into the palm of my hand. And my little thread snips. I couldn't live without them. At your favorite bead reseller, either brick and mortar or online. And remember, they love you. We love you, and we love beads. Until next time, everybody stay safe, keep beading, and have fun. Bye.